Lab Guy here. Today I'm going to service my Shiba Soku 216-1 uh, video signal generator. It generates color bars with I and Q and various uh, crosshatch and dot test patterns for uh, various uses in a television plant and for uh, aligning color television monitors. So let's get on with that right now. This is my Shiba Soku 216-1 color bar generator. It was sold also with the Asaka name brand on it. It was made in Japan in the late 1970s. It produces color bars with I and Q, color bars with gray steps, blank rasters of eight colors, two crosshatch patterns, and two dot patterns. It can output interlaced or non-interlaced NTSC video. It has an RF modulator which outputs on channels A38, A6, and A11. I have never tested those outputs. I am presuming that the A means American channel 38, channel 6, and channel 11. I'm not an advocate of RF uh, television on a workbench. I, I am a user of composite video. Looking at the bottom left, you can see that we have calibration controls for calibrating the output video level the sync level and the setup level. Setup is a DC lift to the black level of the video portion of the signal to lift it above blanking so that in NTSC receivers the blanking is blacker than black. The uh, left hand BNC connector is the video and sync output. Next is an internal external video sync sync input which I believe allows the generator to be gen locked or to have black burst sync fed directly in. I do not know how that works. I don't use that either. The third jack on the right is the RF output for feeding television receivers and on the farthest right is the off-on power switch and pilot light. I have owned this generator for many many years and have used it a lot. I got the uh, big leader generator that used to be on my bench and I put this fellow into storage and he's been in storage for at least six years and um, probably needs some capacitor replacements. I examined the internals and it has a few electrolytic capacitors of uh, nominal values, very easy to replace capacitors. Let's look at the inside of the generator now. Servicing the unit is relatively simple. It has a thumb screw on each side which is simply loosen and then lift the cover off. The bottom comes off the same way but we have no need to get in there. Internally this generator is extremely clean and well designed. It has three major filter capacitors which I will not be changing right now as they appear to be just fine. There are four plug-in circuit boards and these have individual electrolytic capacitors on each board and they have begun to break down. We'll take out the first board hopefully without breaking the unit. and it has one electrolytic capacitor. 
I don't want to get these out of sequence. The next board ap appears to be the master clock board as it has the crystal and it has two electrolytic capacitors and this appears to be the D to A board and it has four electrolytic capacitors. And the final board is the NTSC encoder, or at least the chroma encoder part has two 1496 balanced modulators and it has one, two, three, four, five electrolytic capacitors and they are showing signs of leakage causing corrosion on these solder tinned boards. Before I start, I want to uh, add that this generator works perfectly. It works extremely well and produces a gorgeous high quality signal. This company made extremely high quality products. So we'll replace the first capacitor on this logic board. It's just 7400 logic, which was the state-of-the-art of the time and this capacitor is a 33 microfarad 10 volt and I'm going to replace it with a 33 microfarad 16 volt. I find that before I unsolder something it's better to add some solder. I want to be careful because I do not want to lift the traces on these vintage boards. This capacitor has quite a bit of green on it. I think I'm going to cut him off. And pull the wire separately. I think that's that's uh, probably prudent. Yeah. Okay. That's one. There we go. Resorting to solder wick. It's a lot easier on the uh, the board. The solder sucker likes to really slam down hard into the board. Let me uh, clean this. Let me use a little isopropyl alcohol. That won't all evaporate before we're done, but I bet it does. You 
you want to remove the flux and especially the uh, caustic material that came out of the old capacitor. Well, here's our new part. It's very tiny. And it's a little smaller than the original. No big deal. Put that over there. And let's see. Plus is the big stripe. All right. Nothing like putting these guys in the wrong way. I think I want to lay him down like that. There. And snip these off. That solder him from the top. And back in those days, they used these disc ceramic capacitors for bypassing their chips. And uh, they're sticking up. I like to bend them over because they're going to get bent over anyways and they break off. I don't like these kind of capacitors in general because they um, are very temperature sensitive but for this application it's irrelevant. Uh, but I will say that for uh, LS family TTL logic this is not a sufficient amount of bypass capacitors. <laughs> All right, I one board down. Next board, board number two. We have two electrolytics. They are both 33s at 10. And we'll change them out. 33s. I need two of them. All right. So, okay, we'll cut this one off first. Have a little bit of corrosion there. Not as bad as the other one. We'll place some solder to create a heat bridge. Corrosion is really keeping the solder from flowing. Pull that one out. There we go. Use this for the bulk cleaning. This stuff works so well. Corroded. It is corroded through the uh, the copper. But the uh, the plated through hole is still connected. All right, they were good enough to label plus and minus for us.
push him in to there. Uh -huh. And get over. One down. We have that. Yeah, where'd he go? There, that one is replaced, and now we're going to change this one. Pretty leaky. All right. Got him. All right. I think we're just going to wait this. to be a little tenacious. Um, we'll use the, use the solder pump on that. And we'll try it again. There we go. Ambassador back to make room for him. I want him lying down so that he doesn't flex with the temperature. Two capacitors changed. Board number three. We have several, I mean five to change on here. I guess I'll start in the upper left corner. 33 at 10, a 33 at 10, and a 33 at 10. So three of those and two 100 microfarad 16 volts. We get three of the 33s and two 100s and 16. There we go. We have our capacitors. I'm using my uh, eBay capacitor kits. Uh, I highly recommend these. This came from Jacob's Parts is the seller. Okay, there are many sellers. I'm not plugging this one in particular. I'm just letting you know that's one of them. Very well. 
let's take out this capacitor first. We'll leave this one sticking up since he has a transistor right there. The same height. That's one. Next. Let's go ahead and um, I'm going to change all three of these at once. The two outside ones are the 100s. So the smaller capacitor, I can get the cutters under it. The larger capacitors, I can't. So what do you do about those to change them? So that we don't wreck the uh, traces on the bottom of the board, you just take these guys and you literally, there's a cap behind here, I'm going to get him out of the way, you literally snap them off. You pull them off the board. You, you essentially pull the legs out of the capacitor. like that. See? And now you can unsolder them. You can unsolder those individually. Be careful. Don't pull too hard because you'll core the board. You'll you'll pull the the plating out of those holes in the board and that's a bad thing. So, we just walk this guy off like this. Uh, let's put a screwdriver under this guy and pull him up. All righty. Leave the leads there as markers. Don't know if you can see it, but the uh, there is quite a bit of corrosion on the tinned surface of the board. That's a sign that these capacitors have been leaking. They probably leaked years ago. They're probably bone dry inside, dry as a desert. So let's. Uh, do the 33 first. The corrosion has eaten through all the way around the via and the feed through of this capacitor does not connect top to bottom. The heavy trace here on the bottom is not connecting through. I mean, yeah. It's uh, broken right there. We're going to solder it top and bottom to uh, fix that. You see, I flooded around his lead to uh, reconnect that feed through to both sides. Now we'll, we'll pull out these large capacitor pins.
you can see the corrosion on this guy here. Where it's black, it has corroded the tin and lead of the solder. And where it's green, it has gone through to the copper. <coughs> That's caused by the electrolyte from the capacitors. Electrolytic capacitor is kind of a very short-term battery and so it's filled with a chemical paste to increase its capacitance. And of course that can leak out. I don't really like that. Like corrosion. It's etched deeply into that trace. All right, let's put in our new 100 microfarad capacitor. You can see that the new one is much smaller than the old one. Plus to the right. Put him in and bend him over the same way. It's not soldering. We'll have to use some flux. I'll put a drop of flux on there. That should clean away the crud, but I don't know. It's not looking good. soldered front and back, more or less. Being a little more aggressive this time. I'm getting down to shiny metal now. And get this curl, this copper oxide. You can't solder to copper oxide. That looks better. Still not taking solder. Now that's better than it was. It is now connected. Okay, that's one.
making sure we connect to both sides of the board. All right. All three capacitors in this region have been replaced. We have one to go. This one uh, doesn't look corroded. He just hadn't got around to it yet. Plus to the left. All the capacitors are done on this board now. Okay, final board. This is the this is the uh, NTSC encoder board. Okay, there's some corrosion down there. That seems to be a capacitor that was reworked. So we've got one, two, three, four of the 100 microfarads and two of the 33's. Boy, that, that 33 really leaked. Okay, the corrosion right here is excessive. And the corrosion around this little guy here is excessive. It's pretty bad. Oh, look at this one. He's leaked all under this integrated circuit. That's going to be fun. It's bad. Wow. Okay, let's get started. We need three, four of the 100s. One, two, three, four. And we need two of the 33s. There we go. All right. This one we can get to and cut him off. Wow, that's ugly. Good. We can cut this one off. Okay, stop right there, Rich. Step. Let's mark it there. There. <laughs> I tend to lose track of these things if I don't do this. Okay, this is bad. Let's try to uh, try to clean it up. Juice on this one ran down the trace quite a ways. All right, let's pull these leads out.
All right, that's so bad. All right, this one's so bad, I'm going to have to get very aggressive to clean that. So I got my wire brush, and I even have some sandpaper if I'm that desperate. So let's see if this start this will clean it off. is after all only a, a DC DC power line so that's pretty good that's cleaned up fairly well this guy up by this IC oh good the corrosion the corrosion on this one didn't get under the IC after all. Thank God. Okay. Let's let me declare that good enough. Okay, I was able to poke poke a wire through the hole, so it's open. laboratory wipes paper towel there we go wow okay well that did the trick all right 100 microfarads Oh, 
Fortunately, the corrosion was limited to the top. All right. Now, for the next one, the next big one, we'll just tear him off the board. There we go, he's out. And we'll pull the pins. That stuff corrodes my soldering iron pretty fast as well. smelly. There we go. Once again, very ugly. negative supply. So he has to go in. All right. That opened up on the bottom, and the bottom's not corroded, so we're lucky there. I'm going to take out the 33 microfarad at the same time. doesn't look good. That's fine. Ah. It looks okay on the back side. Right here. The front, not so much. I'll clean off the solder and sand that a little bit. It's pretty bad.
taken the has taken the plating off the edge fingers themselves. Not much I can do about that. Alrighty. Not very pretty, I can tell you that. capacitors to go. All the capacitors are now replaced on this board. All of the capacitors have been changed on the boards now and the boards are back in the unit. So let's go ahead and hook up the oscilloscope and the video monitor and have a look at whether this thing still works or not and how well it works. Well, that looks very good. I'd call that broadcast quality on any good day. Exceptionally high quality at the very least. This is being displayed on my Sony Professional LCD monitor. This is a SD HD capable LCD monitor. This is the color bars with I and Q signal you just saw on the monitor being displayed at vertical rate on the oscilloscope. If we look at it at horizontal rate which will be more difficult. Oh, it's not so bad. You can see that it looks very good as well. This is the 
it's the way that the scope triggers. This is the I and Q portion, the lower half of the color bars. And if we look at it that speed, well, we can't see anything. So we will go into vertical trigger and then into delayed sweep. All right, and we can move over. Okay. This is the vertical interval. Very clean, proper sync pulses. open that up. What I've done is I've narrowed down the window we're looking at. This is the I and Q portion which we just saw. Now let's move over and look at the color bars. And this is the color bars. Well, I'll try to focus that a little better. So that is the color bar signal and uh, got a rusty connector do we stop that okay so that's what color bars look like in one line so the bars went from white no subcarrier to yellow, cyan, green, violet, red, blue, and black. Where there is a hue in the picture, you will have this RF carrier. And where there is uh, no hue, such as at black or at white, there is no color carrier. punch out of this. Note down here it looks different than up here. I've gone to a different flavor of the uh, of the color bars. All right this is the color bars with color and then well, that's a good picture of it. This is the gray steps the black and white steps portion of the color bars with the color carrier removed, just the luminance steps. The color sequence in color bars is chosen so that the luminance will form this staircase. Now we can go back and look at the color bars so we can look at the just the grayscale. So there you go. The Shiba Soku 216-1 has all new capacitors on its circuit boards and is ready for another 40 years of service. This is color bars with I and Q. Those are the I and Q signals are the portion below the middle of the screen. Color bars are self-explanatory. Here's color bars with gray steps across the bottom. Here is blank raster. And we can turn off or turn on various colors. We can have full brightness, gray, red only, green only, blue only, blue and green, which is cy supposed to be cyan green, green and red, which is yellow, red only, red and blue, which is purple or magenta in television terms, and all three of them produce white. Alrighty, the next uh, pattern of choice is crosshatch. This is used in cathode ray tube televisions to set the vertical and horizontal size and linearity. This is a higher resolution version of that. 
I'm not sure what they intended us to use that for. This is crosshatch and dots which can be used for convergence of color CRT monitors and just dots for the same purpose. Being digitally generated they are geometrically perfect in the signal and being that this is an LCD monitor their grid arrangement is geometrically perfect. I currently have the monitor set to display a 4x3 image. That you'll note that on the left and the right of the 16x9 format panel we have two black bars left and right. I hope you enjoyed that walkthrough of the Shiba Soku 216-1 color bar generator and it's uh, servicing to uh, replace uh, rotten capacitors. Hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. So welcome to all the new subscribers as usual. Greetings to all of my current subscribers. Thank you for watching. I always appreciate your viewership. More views is better, right? So until next time, this is Lab Guy out. <laughs>